we're going to be looking at how to make a Sankey diagram, which is a diagram that we use to show flow. In order to do that, we need to come up with some data where we could envision numerical quantities flowing from one value to another. And a classic example of this is a budget. And so I thought it might be fun to look at the Penn State budget for the 2022-2023 academic year. So let's have a look at that. I have brought it up here online. And what you can see is that if we scroll down, there's some information and then a bunch of numbers. And so what we have here then is the total budget. And we see uh, expenditures and revenues. These are in dollars in terms of thousands of dollars. We'll change that as we import the data because I think millions is a little bit easier to work with. If we scroll down, you can also see that we have the general revenue broken out by category and then also the general expenditures broken out by category. So I'll include a link to where this was in the video description. And uh, let's just go ahead and import this data and make a Sankey diagram. So the easiest way to do this, I think, is just to input it in Excel. It's a little easy to keep track of what's going on. I've recategorized things ever so slightly. And I've also changed this to be millions of dollars instead of thousands of dollars. And then we're going to plot this. And to plot this, we're going to use a tool online called the Sankey-Matic. I think this is a pretty nice free tool. Uh, we can't really do this easily in Excel or in Vue, which are the things that we typically work in for this channel. So instead, let's see how this works. What's going to happen is you can click here, enter your data, and then you'll have an example chart that comes up where you can see how it's built and constructed. And the basic idea of constructing this is that you give something a category a value and then another category. And you can see that if we have something like wages and other that both have values that go to a new category and it's shared budget, then both lines will end up at budget. Likewise, if we start with budget, we can split it out into different things like housing, food, transportation, and savings. All right, we're not gonna use this. We're going to use what we had for the Penn State budget. And so I think an easy way to handle this is actually to modify the data ever so slightly and then make our lives a little bit uh, easier in terms of being able to read it. So let's go ahead and do that. And so because what we want to have is the data read category, that amount, and where it goes in square brackets. Let's just go ahead and put that in the middle here. I'll move that over to here. And we're basically structuring this like we would like to have the Sankey diagram structured. So let's call this um, total budget or something like that. We'll give this the name budget, and then we'll just copy that all the way down to the bottom. And then these numbers, if we're going to have them here, really should be inside square brackets. So I will go ahead and add square brackets to each one of these so that I can just copy and paste it straight into this Sankey diagram. Um, and of course, I won't make you watch this, so we'll come back when that is done. Okay, now we have everything filled out and ready to go. So what we want to do then is replace everything we have here. So let's go ahead and delete that and then go back to our data and start copying and pasting this in. So we'll just go state appropriation, budget, over like this, copy and paste. And then you'll see that if I click the show button, now I have the input part of this. You can also see that I have made a mistake, which I didn't catch before, right here on this square. So instead, let me fix that and then everything goes in correctly. Great. Going back then, let me just go ahead and fix that real quick. And then what we can do is we can create the outflow by just copying and pasting those in. And so let's go ahead and do that. Now we have the budget going over to everything else. I'll click show and look at that. We now have everything set up that shows the basic Sankey diagram. Now, there's some formatting that needs to be done, and I think the chief thing that I would do is actually reorder this in terms of largest to smallest in both of these cases. And so this case will just go into Excel, 
and we can resort things here. Normally we could use data sort, but because I've done the formatting where I put in these square brackets, it's not going to recognize these as numbers. So I think the easiest thing to do is just uh, do it ourselves at this point. This is clearly the largest value. We'll add it up here. Then we go to the next largest value and so on. Again, I won't make you watch this, so we'll just come back when it's all done. Okay, and now we have everything sorted. Let's just go ahead and copy all this. And once we have it copied, we can just replace that up here at the top. If we click show, you'll see now everything is sorted in terms of top to bottom, large to small. We can go back to Excel. We can come in, we can copy the expenditures and do the same thing on the expenditure side, show. And now we have something where I think it's easier to understand what the largest it component is, especially when things are of similar size, because we see now that they come down in the order of decreasing amounts. Okay, so the next thing to do is perhaps worry about the formatting in the appearance of this. And one thing I don't really like about the Sankey diagram defaults is that it puts these labels inside each of the flow markings. And so they can start to overlap with each other. It can be a little hard to see what's going on. And so I think the easiest way to fix that is to just go down to the label and units section and say, always put these on the outside. Of course, you can see now that everything is squished and you can't tell what's happening, but that's okay because all we really need to do is adjust the width of this diagram. So let's set it to 1200. Now everything is spread out. We can see that it's easy to read all the text. Things still go large to small. I have these budgets. The next thing I would worry about perhaps is color. And so the way that color works is under this node business, I can go in and I can say, here's the categories. Maybe I want to use this tableau coloring scheme, maybe this dark mode coloring scheme and so on. Within a particular coloring scheme, I can also go in and I can change the ordering to see what this is like. I don't think any of these are actually a good idea though. Um, you can also make this simple, which I think is actually even better than any of the options we had here for categories. But you can also specify the color for each one of these if we wish to. And so in order to do that, what we can do is we can just pick a color that we want, name the node that we want to have it be that color, and then supply that color. And I think a nice thing to do might be show income in green of different shades, maybe even of green if we want. And so let's go ahead and do that. We can go to this coolers website that we have seen before, and we can just simply create a seven color gradient that runs from one dark green to a light green. And here they are. Let's say I want to start with this. I can just click on it. Now it's copied to the clipboard. I can come back. The way that coloring works in this particular uh, tool is that I use a colon. I give a name for what I want to change the color of tuition and and fees. And then I simply give the uh, value of the hex code after a dollar sign. And now if I click show, you'll see that I have colored the node and then the flow is a lighter version of that. And so in order to fill out this gradient, all I would do is go state appropriation and then number sign, go back, pick up the color that I'm interested in, come back, paste it in. I can click show and you can see that I had forgotten the colon out front and so it doesn't know what's going on. Now I have this slightly different green and I can just keep going down and down and down. I'm not going to make you watch me do this, but this could be done uh, to make something that looks nice and uniform and connected. And then you would do the same thing for the other side, except we would pick a series of gradients that are based around something else, maybe a different color. I could go in, I could choose a dark red, and then I could work from that dark red to a lighter red on the expenditure side if I wanted. All right, so let's go back. What else might we change? Well, this is values, but the values are really in millions of dollars. And so we can go back to the labels and units and I can say that the prefix should be 
dollars and the suffix should be million and you can see that this is now added in. What else might we want to do? You can control a few other things like what is the height of each node? What is the spacing between each node? And get something that you think looks nice in terms of those options. Uh, you can control the width of each node here. And so you can see that this is growing the width of the nodes. I think actually these thick nodes can look kind of nice, but so can really thin nodes as well. Um, and this is totally up to you how you want to deal with this. All right, there's some other options that you can play around with that we're not going to explore too much in terms of where things are, whether you reverse the graph or not, um, what the background color is, whether it's transparent for when you're exporting maybe as a PNG or an SFG. Both of these are options. What the margins are around this plot and so on. And so anyway, what you can do is play around with these. When you get something that's finally how you like it to be, you can just go in, you can choose to export at a particular size, uh, and then click this, and it will just download the thing for you, either as a PNG or as an SVG, if you would rather have the scalable vector graphics. And there is the code for the scalable vector graphics, and you can just copy that and use it directly if you would like to. And so that's all I really want to say right now. I will take a quick break and recolor everything as I would do it so that we have that at final, and that will be it. Hopefully you've enjoyed learning how to make a Sankey diagram with this pretty simple but effective tool.